I spent over five hours trying to take that ball joint out and finally I managed to get it out but you know what I didn't get a footage of that because I turned off the camera and I thought I'd never be able to get it out almost lost hope but let me show you where we are at, at this moment so as you can see it is truly out so right now I am editing this video and I can see no footage of me removing that ball joint but I want to say thank you very much for everyone who contributed to this video and told me how to do it basically I went out and bought all the tools that you guys recommended which I will show you now and I will tell you how I did uh, or how I managed to remove the ball joint eventually at the end of the video because I have recorded at the end of the video rather than the beginning is SMS yeah I know but anyway let me show you what tools I have used based on you guys recommendation I did go out and bought this uh, ball, uh, ball joint uh, separator which is a fork basically and I continue on using this part here and I've used a combination of hammers and even used this to pry it down uh, one of the comments uh, said that I should do that but honestly all of this didn't work except one actually what do you think which one it would be I think you all know which one it would be and you are right it is this one and what I did is I hammered the knuckle for about five hours <laughs> yeah maybe I should have maybe I should get a, a more heavy duty hammer but I will show you at the end of the video on how I did it and yeah I'm really upset how I didn't manage to take a footage of it but it is what it is right let's get down to business let's remove this we need to move the top bolt here just like that just gonna use this to clean So after wheel brush the important bits, I'm going to use copper grease just over here. So it makes it nice and smooth to go in and it doesn't get rusty. And then I'm going to add some thread lock over here. And now we put it back in, just like so. We put the nut in. We're not worried about torquing it for now. Just put it in. I'm going to put thread locker at the end as well. Here. put copper grease here so it's easy for it to slide in and it doesn't get rusty actually I think I'm gonna put copper grease on the whole lot there as well I'm gonna add copper grease here Let's see if it turns perfect now we need to get it from the other side okay so the central is moving and to stop it from moving I think I need to put uh, the jack may be here just a little bit to give it a bit of weight. Let's try it out. So I'll put a jack here just to give it a bit of weight. Let's see. Yeah, it does not move now. So all I had to do is jack it up. And now it doesn't move. So now I'm going to jack the wheel up to put the car or the suspension on standard mode so I'm not gonna lift the car just the suspension just fold the suspension if that makes sense and I'm gonna measure what we did at the beginning of the video which is 48 and a half perfect that's in the center now we tie in the bolts I'm going to tie in the rear bolt here and it's time to torque it but first let's tighten it and then we'll torque it so this bolt over here gets tight in 165 plus 90 so we'll do 160 and then we'll move 5 so that's 165 then we torque it that's it that's 165 and now 90 more degrees so 90 so this way it needs to go all the way down okay just gonna make sure the other side doesn't turn here, make sure the other side doesn't turn. And we do night. <coughs> More. <coughs> now we tighten this knot at 80 Newton meter. But as we know, this knot we cannot put a socket on it, so I cannot torque it using the torque drive. So I know how 80 feels like. So I'm just gonna go for it. Which is yeah, already did actually. <laughs> And that is 80. It's actually way over 80. Before we install the sensor, 
I think I'm better off lowering the arm first and then installing the sensor. Yeah, let's do that first. Okay, so now let's start in the sensor really easy. Then while we took it off, I'm gonna put it here. Don't over tighten it. Now we tighten all the nuts and we put the, set, the sensor back. We need to put the wheel and there are a few more steps we need to do. So what I did is use this hammer, not a mallet, to hit the knuckle at this specific point here. And what that did is just, uh, it broke it loose. It's as simple as that. So my next worry would be the height sensor. What's gonna happen when I turn the car back on or when I connect the battery again? Let's lower the car, take the measure tape, and measure 48 and a half, which will put it in standard mode. And then after that, we'll connect the battery and see how it goes. Here is 50, so that's okay. 49 or 48 and a half. Okay, let's connect the battery then. Perfect. That's it. I'm gonna change my clothes and then we can go for a drive. Let's do it. So now it's the time for the test. Let's go inside the car and see if we get any faults, warning faults. Not the one you get where it says extended height or extended mode. That's that's normal for it to happen or to go on the off-road. That's normal every time you jack up the car. That's, that's fine. The other faults is the warning faults. There's a problem with the suspension. There's a problem with the, um, the height suspension, with the sensor basically. Suspension fault. Oops. But that suspension fault is not that big of a deal because if you look carefully, it's yellow. It's not red. If I go, which one is it? The four, four. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the back. That's not the front. Okay, yeah, that's that's not a problem. That should not be a problem. That's the back. Uh, it's because we're missing, we missed around with the suspension. Let's move the car to the front, okay? And uh, I will show you how we can get rid of it. Okay, so just to show you. There's nothing wrong with the wheel. The wheel, the height, the car can go up and down. There's absolutely nothing wrong in the front and the back. So what we did is we went out on a drive and then we have to go back and reset the system. So the problem is not in the sensor or the actual wheel, it's just miscommunication with the ECU. So what we're going to do is we're gonna disconnect the battery after we put it on standard mode. And this is due to me messing around with the car a lot. That's that's all it is really. And because of our driveway. So we disconnect the battery and we wait 10 minutes and then we connect it back. So now that we have waited 10 minutes, we just go back and plug the cable again. We made sure the steering wheel is straight and everything is straight here, yeah? The suspension miscommunication is normal by the way after you mess with, around with the suspension. It's nothing to worry about. It happened before multiple times when I, if you remember, I disconnected the engine for multiple days and you know, I was working on it because of the leak. So now that it's back in, let's test the car. So now that we disconnected the battery and connected it back in, let's turn on the car again for the first time or second time in this case. And you can see service required. Oh, we need to service the car, okay. You can see no more warning lights. This is just, it's, it's normal. It's normal because we messed around with it. You can see here, can you see here everything is right, but you can see here is the difference. That is to do with my driveway. You see, this is a bit higher, it's a bit lower. It's to do with my driveway. If I move a little bit forward, it may go away. Let's take, let's take a look. See, as promised, everything here is flat. It was just my driveway, but no more warning signs, nothing. Nothing here, it's all good. Right, I would love to know your thoughts about this job. So please put down in the comment below what you think about my job. <laughs> and if you liked it or not, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was entertaining for you. And uh, if you liked it, please hit like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.